everybody! Hey guys! And welcome to a TLP edition of Massey Art, Art Studios. Studios. And what is TLP, you might ask yourself? Well, it's these little bad boys. <laughs> Today we're going to be mixing up pigments and using them alongside acrylic tube paints mm -hmm. to, to create a couple of Dutch pores. Well, why, you might ask yourself? Well, because we can is the answer. Um, we've got some TLP pigments in the studio which are stunning. Yeah. The colours are amazing. We it's so beautiful. They really are. We treated ourselves to probably 25 of these little pots. <laughs> um, and they are not cheap, but they go a very, very, very long way. Um, so these pigments are, are really, really beautiful. We'll show you the colours that we've chosen as we get over to the table. Yeah. And in this episode, we're going to show you how to mix them so that you can use them alongside acrylic tube paints as well. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we're hoping to get some really, really lovely results with them. So the TLP pigments can be all purchased from fluid-art.co. So please go check them out. They've got some wonderful pouring products on there, like mats and silicon mats mm -hmm. and stir sticks. And then you've also got tons of these little piggies too. Yes. Love them so far. Um, Jeremy. Yes. You wanted to show everyone a piece of art that you've got sent from one of our wonderful subscribers who also yes. happens to be one of our Massey Posse. Yes, it's so amazing. Let's see it. All right, so here we go. I am in love with this piece because you all know that I love orange and it's just like a supernova, like a planet just exploded huh. and it's so gorgeous. It's lovely. It's stunning. And who sent it? Who sent it? Yes. None other than the lovely Elaine Burton. That's right. She's yes. One of the Massey Posse. Yes. She sent you this because? I know. She sent me this because I'm a cancer survivor and whenever we did the uh, breast cancer awareness episode. She painted this for me. Huh. Yes. It's stunning. And she calls it Blossom of Hope. Love it. And I am yeah. going to resin it for him because uh, I said that I would. And it's so going to be beautiful. So thank you so very much, Elaine. Thank you, Elaine. For the wonderful, wonderful piece. Oh, <laughs> yes. And it was that piece that, that then inspired us to do some Dutch pause. So thank yes. you, Elaine, for the inspiration too. Um, let's get to this. I'm going to show you how to mix the pigments first. Mm -hmm. Then we'll get to lay them on some canvases for some Dutch pause. And um, we'll see you at the end for a little bit of chat. Yeah. All right, we'll Let's see you there. It. Thanks, guys. What a delicious array. It's a smorgasbord of colour. It is. Right? Well done, Show Pony, for picking some beautiful, beautiful colours. Oh, yeah. Lakeside, sea glass, and sapphires. And be part of my colours. There yes. was an English TV show called Sapphire and Steel I used to remember as a kid, which I loved. Really? Yeah, it was about um, two people. Like They were detectives, I think, but one of them was like had psychic, weird, telekinetic powers and stuff. Oh, yeah. wow. Very 70s and 80s. Um, speaking of Sapphire, here it is in its pigment form. Today, we're going to be using the little piggies. And we're going to be mixing these alongside some tube paints in a acrylic Dutch pour. Nice. How the blooming heck do you get this to stand aside Amsterdam and Goldens and all your wonderful acrylics? I'm sure you're all asking. Well, I'm going to try, with the help of Show Pony, to give you the answer. Well, that's going to be amazing. And thank you, sir. <laughs> it is. Let's do this. All right. So first off, let's talk safety and PPE real quick. Yes. These pigments are super, super, super fine. They're ground to a like a, a, a powder that you can easily breathe into your lungs. If you breathe it in, it'll stay in your lungs and it will not be good for you over time. So if you're going to be using pigments or micas, then the absolute minimum that you should be doing is wearing a mask. Um, is that why you're wearing a mask? That is exactly why I'm wearing a mask. And me too. And you too, sir. <laughs> uh, we're also mixing these in our garage with our door open, so we're taking every precaution, lots of ventilation, lots of air circulating, but we are wearing a mask in order to make sure that we don't breathe these little bad boys in. Perfect. Okay, apart from that, these are super safe. So the first thing I'm going to do is disperse this powder into a liquid in order for me to then mix it with our pouring medium. If you were to just take this with a little popsicle stick and dump it into your flow troll, it just wouldn't work. It would be a real nightmare to get that pigment to color the pouring medium. You'd get clumps, you'd get all sorts of stuff in there and, and it would not dry well. 
So the first things you have to do is to mix this into a liquid and then mix it into your pouring medium. If you're a baker or a cook or a chef, it's like mixing cornstarch with a little bit of milk before you make a custard or for your gravy, for your biscuits and gravy. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to tap the top of this first to get all the pigment off the top. And then, oh, I'm not going to use this one actually. Yes. I'm sorry. Woo! I'm glad I'm wearing my mask. Did you see all that? Like just yeah. spurt up there? Instead, we're going to use the seagrass. So let's tap on the top of it just to make sure that all the pigment goes to the bottom. There we go. All right, now for the purposes of showing you guys, I am gonna use a scale, but I wouldn't normally when doing this. Um, this is not an exact science. This is just what I've been doing and the show pony's been doing in the course of playing around with these pigments. But what we're going to do is take a heaped end of the popsicle stick, which is just this amount, and get it into my cup. And that is, well, it says it's one gram. Um, that's exactly how much we're gonna use because we're only gonna mix one ounce of colorant in total. Got it. So it's just a little bit of pigment. Next, I need to wet that. I need to make it into a consistency that's gonna allow me to mix it with my pouring medium. And for that, we're going to be using Josonia gloss varnish. Oh, okay. Right? This isn't going to be used as a pouring medium, so we're not gonna pour an ounce in here. What we're going to do is just wet the pigment in order for me to be able to mix it with the pouring medium. Okay. So, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, how much of this are you going to use? In this instance, I'm gonna use six grams. So you can see now that my gloss varnish is now within my pigments. Mm -hmm. I'm going to at first really gently just incorporate this. Now, like I said, I'm wearing a mask, so I don't have to be too careful, but I don't want to lose any of my pigment as I, if I were too vigorous in the mixing. But again, I used that cooking analogy previously. Cornstarch is like the best example that I can give you because it starts to thicken up in the in the gloss varnish here, you can see that. If this was cornstarch, I'd now be adding some milk into this and then pouring it into my biscuits or right. into my custard, whatever it is that you're making. But at the minute that it's incorporated, then I can now kind of be a little more vigorous with it. What I'm doing is just making sure that every single bit of pigment is completely dispersed within this pouring medium. Now, it's not dissolving, it's actually dispersing. So it's colored that gloss varnish, as you can see. And now it's nice and wet, and now whatever pouring medium I pour in here, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to mix it into. Does that make sense, Show Pony? It sure does. Okay. So you're trying to make sure that there's no lumps in it. No lumps, no little stray flecks of pigment lying around, scraping the edges, scraping the sides. And for this, I'm not going to be using like a cup that's got ridges because that would make it even more difficult. These little Dixie cups are completely flat on the bottom and my popsicle stick allows me to get right in the edges. So I've mixed my pigment now into the gloss varnish. Now I'm going to take my pouring medium and for the purposes of this Dutch pour, I'm using this. Now this is a pre-mix of 50% Floetrol and 50% Liquitex pouring medium. So it's actually nice and thin. Um, I'm going to use an ounce of it with this pigment. So let's put one ounce. It's a little over, but that's totally fine. Now I'm going to mix these two together. So we know what our consistency needs to be for a Dutch pour. It needs to be that super runny, super kind of almost milky consistency. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> now you want it like a vitamin D whole milk, not the two percent <laughs> not the fat free it's the vitamin d not very specific it is only. it is because what happens if you can't get your hands on vitamin d milk well you're not actually mixing vitamin d milk right. you just want it, the consistency of vitamin d milk which is a little heavier than the two percent of the fat so it so it's whole milk Yes, whole milk. Okay, where did the vitamin D come from? Because it says vitamin D whole I think, milk. I think that's just the Kroger, a specific version. I think it's got some vitamin D added to it, but I think what you're saying is whole milk, right? Yes, whole milk. Okay, in England, we don't have none of that shenanigans. We have skim, semi-skimmed, and whole. Okay, so you want whole milk. Whole milk, okay. Yeah. So you see it's completely dispersed now into this, into this pigment. Look how wonderful that color is. Holy oh, moly, that's, that's a great color. 
That's the sea glass, right? That is, oh it is. God, How cool. It's, almost, it's like it's like the pearl pistachio. That's mm -hmm. what I would kind of relate it to, mm -hmm. but only, only nicer. Mm -hmm. Now, this has a little bit of body in it. It's probably a little too thick. So I'm going to put in the tiniest amount of water. I mean, we're just adding drops. That was probably like five drops of water. My pouring medium is thin. It was not just straight flow troll. So I don't need to put too much water in, but I really want to make sure that all of the paints that I have are all, all the paints and all the pigments that I have are all the same consistency. And that is pretty spot on. So as you can see now, everything is dispersed. Everything is mixed. There's no lumps, there's no clumps. Could, could and, you uh, pick it up? There you go. And for a Dutch pour, this is the perfect consistency. There's no mound. There's not even really a trace. It's literally just disappearing on itself. Yes. Now, sure, if you'll allow me, I'll mix all the other ones up for you to exactly the same consistency. That's amazing. Now, let me get it to it. All right. Well, hello, ladles and jelly spoons and little piggy fans. It's Lee here at the table, and I'm gonna go first. Yeah. So you've just seen me mix up or disperse those beautiful, beautiful pigments into the Josonia varnish, then into our pouring medium to get this to a Dutch pour consistency. And those three colors that you see here before you are the three that I'm using alongside my three tube paints. So I have lemon sorbet, I have pinwheel, and I've got shimmer. Now this pinwheel is this almost like color shifty between like purple, lilac-y and like a blue color. It is crazy awesome. What I'm hoping and praying for is that you still get to see these in this Dutch pour. And because I've chosen some really light colors, my base coat is gonna be black, and my tube paints are going to be Amsterdam's Ultramarine Violet. It's gonna be Amsterdam's Brilliant Blue. And then I've also got Amsterdam's Greenish Blue. So those are my three tube paints, and then there's my three pigments that I've got for this, what is a wonderful 14 by 18 inch canvas. I love this size show pony. It's like, it's bigger than an 11 by 14, but it's a really nice size for kind of any wall. Yes, it Don't is. you agree? I do, I really love this one. Now, quick note on the tube paints, because you just saw me mix up the pigments, but these are all mixed to our normal, thin Dutch pour pouring consistency. So that is 50% Floetrol, 25% paint and 25% water. So every single one of these consistencies, regardless of whether it was a pigment or whether it was a tube paint, are all exactly the same. Oh, and this, by the way, is the Liquitex Basics. Uh, sorry, Liquitex Basics Acrylic, and that is the Mars Black. So that's what I'm gonna be Dutch pouring onto. So, I'm just gonna stop waffling and I'm gonna get to this. Stop waffling. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let me layer a nice base coat of black onto this canvas, and then we're going to start pouring the colors on top. All right, let me get to that first. All right, look at that wonderful Mars black base coat. So reflective, I can see you guys in the camera right there. Um, next to layering these colors. So I've spent a little time just thinking about how I'm gonna layer. And I'm going to layer as much as I'm, I can, if it's gonna work this way, a tube paint, then a pigment, then a tube paint, then a pigment. So I'm gonna layer them in between each other just to see if that helps me kind of make sure that I keep some of the colors here on this canvas. So let's start off with our greenish blue. Um, and I'm thinking about how I'm gonna layer these, so I'm going to do it this way, starting off by pouring off the canvas first. And then I'm gonna branch up and out. Okay. So next I'm gonna then layer in a pigment and this is shimmer. So let's get this one onto the canvas next.
I feel like there's definitely more colour here than there is up here, but I'm not mad about it. I'm gonna just see how this works. Sure. So next, I'm gonna take Pinky. Came all the way to the Fluid Art Experience with us and I use this one in our advanced classes. And I'm gonna use it here to blow this Dutch pour out. So my plan is to go along this way first and then let's blow this one up here second. I'm gonna use it on what is probably the highest Speed, although there isn't, doesn't really seem to be an awful lot of difference between the two right. speeds on Pinky, but I'll use it on the highest and then use that to help me blow out the composition. But before I do that, last time we did Dutch pours, someone in the comments said, you didn't do Dutch pours, you did blows out, blow, blow outs, because you didn't pour your base coat over your colors. And you know, there are different ways of doing this, but I'm going to do it the Molly, and the rinse away. So I'm gonna blow my base coat black over my colors first before blowing this one out. So I'm gonna use my base coat again, blow that over my colors, and then we'll then blow out the composition. So let's do that. So yeah, super interesting result. Um, I can still see the lemon sorbet. I can definitely still see the white because that's definitely helped me get some of this really interesting cells going on over here. And I can still see the pinwheel shining through. What I lost actually was my Amsterdam, which was my very first color that I put down. So I'm guessing it's probably if I were to blow this one out more, it would probably come through. But I kind of like the electric kind of shock kind of effect that I got on this one. Um, there's lots of lacing into the black. I know Show Pony is not going to pour his colors over his, um, or his base coat over his colors before he pours it out. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what effect he gets with the pigments not doing it that way. Um, but I actually do like this one. I like it on the black base. Um, what you won't be able to see at home is all the shimmer from all those pigments. Um, but it's really pretty. And I'm interested to see what happens as this one dries. So um, I'm definitely gonna scrape my edges of this. As you guys know, in a Dutch pour, it's really important because those thin colors will just pull all of the composition off the top of your paint if you do not scrape your edges. So I'm gonna do that at least once, if not a couple of times. And, uh, and then I'm gonna take you guys in for a close up. All right guys, this is my TLP and Amsterdam Dutch pour. Hey guys, it is Jeremy here and I'm super excited about this Dutch pour that mm, I'm doing today. A little experimentation. Yes, absolutely. And uh, I got a 14 by 18, one and a half inch deep gallery wrapped canvas by The Edge, mm -hmm. which is amazing. I love these. It is pinned and taped on the back. Um, the colors that I'm using today, the little piggy that I'm using today is the Sapphire, 
which is just stunning. Right. Um, I'm using the Lakeside, which is another beautiful color. Love that one. Yeah. And this sea glass, which I'm in love with. Oh my God, it's so good. It's very similar to like the pearl pistachio. It is. But just it nicer. Is. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also using the Sky Blue Light by Amsterdam. I'm using this permanent red purple by Amsterdam. Gorgeous color. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also using this ultramarine violet by Amsterdam. Love it. Yeah, it's a gorgeous and color. And you're doing a white base coat. I am, I'm doing a white base I coat. I like that. Yeah, 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 I'm really excited. Now the white is just the Liquitex Basics white. It is, titanium Liquitex white. Basics white titanium. And as I did Dutch bore and blew my colors over my composition before blowing it out, I know that that is not your intention, sir, and instead you're just gonna do yeah. a blowout. Do a blowout. Still, people still call it a Dutch bore. Um, but yes, you're gonna be blowing this one out. Yeah. All right, so let me get to flooding my, my canvas. Let's do it. All right, guys, so I got my base coat down mm -hmm. and I'm so ready to do these colors on I this canvas. I'm ready to see them and see how this works. I know, oh, so excited. Go for it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with this sapphire. That's a very thick band of color. It is. I'm excited to see how these spread, spread on the out. canvas. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, a I lot like of color. That. I think one of the things that you could have taken away from mine was that I didn't have enough color on there. Those pigments definitely got swallowed up a little bit by my black. I had yeah. too much negative space. I like what you've done there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay. Are you ready? I am ready. Then you Dutch pull this one out. Okay guys, so what I'm seeing here, I'm really liking. I'm loving all this lacing that's going on, like the colors, it's so beautiful. What I am gonna do though is I'm going to add a few little bams to it. Embellishments. With embellishments with my little tiny blower. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do that.
right, guys, I'm in love with this. A lot more of that color came out from underneath whenever I was working with this. Um, I'm loving everything that's happening, like the mixture of colors, uh, everything like the red came out underneath here, the purple came out from underneath here, some of the purple and, the, and that permanent red, uh, red violet came out right here. Love it, I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. I think it's great. Keep it as it is, Keep scrape it those it edges, is. big boy. Yes. Let's do it, let's take you in for a close up. Yeah. So we, we kind of felt like it was really hard to see the result of the TLPs in these pores in our studio because it was a little dark. But hopefully what you can see right here is all that blooming shimmer. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. I hope this camera picks it up. It's stunning. Show Boney, that's really pretty. Um, those pigments in there are just shining. And you've got these wonderful kind of like rivers of sparkle. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. This was a really fun pour and this one definitely worked. So yeah, I love it. Well done, Show Pony. Thank you. So there you have it, folks. <laughs> there you have it. Now I needed to show you that extra bit of footage just of Show Pony's piece as it was sitting in the sunshine because mm. what we felt you couldn't, couldn't see in the studio was all that bling. And uh, your piece just shone, just like mine did, but yours was particularly shimmery and shiny. It was Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. What did you think of your piece? I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought there was a great definition of all the colors uh, shown through. Right. Um, I liked that it wasn't really thin. I liked it that it was a little bit wider. Uh -huh. um, I like that big floral bloom that comes out with that. Right. Uh, so I loved my piece. I thought it was wonderful. I love that you embellished it. I do too. When you layer a lot of paint down on that Dutch pour, it can kind of look like a purple cabbage leaf. <laughs> um, so by just embellishing some of the edges, it kind of created a little bit more of a, of a, of a yes. composition, something for the eye to look at. Exactly. I loved it. I really liked mine. I, I, it's very different to yours. As it's sitting, it's, it's, it's getting even more different because the black is starting to swallow up some of the colors. Um, there is still color present, but it's definitely more electric. It yeah. looks very electrifying with that black base. And it's different because I blew the base over the colors. Yes. Um, um, I'm gonna try that color scheme again off camera without doing the blow over and just blowing it out and seeing what happens. Okay. And I'm wondering if, if I'm gonna get a different result. Um, mm. But yeah, it was really pretty. And again, lots and lots of shimmer and shine. It just it was so much easier to see on your piece yeah. because of all the color that was still there. Exactly. That's it guys. Um, I think we are the end of the train. If not, it's Karen who's going up after us. You will have already seen Mina and Gina. Mina and Gina. Um, and if you haven't already seen them, please go back and check them out again. Yes. If you haven't seen our recent episode with Cole and Swing Painting, please check that out too. That was awesome. And if you haven't already subscribed to Discovery Plus, please consider doing it because Meet Your Maker Showdown is now airing. Yeah. You can go and watch both soap making and candle making. And over the next three weeks, there's paper, polymer clay and stained glass. And then on Christmas Day, it's going to be the fluid art episode of which I am in. So uh, please, please, please go consider joining. You can join on your laptop and then stream it on Apple TV. That's exactly what we did. And uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. All right, guys, that is it. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you back here on Tuesday. Go check out the rest of the peeps in the club today and we'll see you very soon. Yes. All right, guys, thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.